Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. I just have Tom Likas! And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's in every car of a radio talk program. We are the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And, uh, oh, I've got a lot of stuff to tell you. I mean, this is a very interesting development in my life and with my dispute with my neighbor over the the filming that's been uh, going on and apparently is not going to stop until I take dramatic action to stop it. Got some very big news about that coming up. But uh, I don't want to uh, delay in any way our guest who's calling in. And uh, uh, Robbie Gordon is joining us. Uh, Robbie, where are you? I'm actually uh, at the racetrack here in Fontana. Just... Um I got an appearance over here in, in Costco in Fontana in about an hour and had a little bit of time, thought I'd call in and check in with you. I'm glad you did. Now, how's the weather out there? All right, it's, it's been cold. Fill me in on this uh, this filming going on next to your house. <laughs> <laughs> the filming, the, 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 the guy across the street from me, who is a well-known, let's just say he's a fashion designer. I won't say who he is. He uh, decided to start renting his home out for film shoots. And, you know, at first it was one or two photo shoots or something. And now he's essentially turned his home into like a full-time production facility. And so the latest thing I got a little note about on my door, he wants to do, they, 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 they're they going to have a nine-day shoot of a feature film. Now, my street in the Hollywood Hills is about the size of your driveway. Maybe. it If two cars were going in opposite directions on my street, they scrape. <laughs> That's how narrow my street is. And they want to load in all this equipment and all these actors and all these uh, production assistants and everything uh, for for nine straight business days from 6 a.m. to 1 a.m. And the city of L.A. has pretty much uh, just had uh, this hands-off attitude, like anyone can do anything they want. So my attitude is I'm going to do whatever I want. So we're going to be creating some distractions across the street. They're going to make filming difficult, and I've, I've got a few of those in the works right now. What kind of distractions? I mean, give me give me an idea. Well, for example, there's uh, the the side of my home. I've been thinking of redoing the stucco, and if you've ever redone stucco on on a home, first thing you have to do is do a little sandblasting, a sandblast off the existing stucco, and that's going to start right about uh, the time they're done loading in the equipment. We'll start sandblasting the stucco, uh, and then uh, before we start applying the stucco, I think I got to get out some jack hammers. Got to work a little bit on the hill around my house. Uh, possibly, uh, I've also got some, uh, firewood that needs to be split. I'm going to use a power saw for that. No point just using a regular hatchet or an axe on that. We're going to get a power saw and cut right through. And, uh, ultimately then when it gets to be nighttime and I can't make noise legally anymore, we've got some, uh, uh we're going to have some, uh, Klieg lights or spotlights that we're going to shine right up across my street to across to the other house. Right when they're shooting. So, you can have that. You can have an after hours party, though, can't you? Your house. I mean, I can. Uh, if, until, by the until, way, if I at least ten p.m. Right. If if I can get you to come to my house as the drawing card for my party, I'm in. Could you bring the car? I'll bring the car. And we'll, we'll we'll do some dino runs. I'll bring the the Perfect. dino and we'll, we'll jack it up there. And we'll make some polls. Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, now now I can now see now I can get this. Okay, I got, just got this email. Since you're into this, I'll I'll tell it to you while you're here. I got an email. From a guy named Matt. Matt writes it. It says, "So I've been listening to about the to you talk about the filming problem you're having at your home, and it gave me an idea." He said, "I'm currently a section leader for the Spirit of Troy, the University of Southern California Trojan Marching Band, and the band of your Los Angeles Lakers." I remember you saying something recently about how you were going to try to disrupt their filming with noise disruptions of your own, and I thought to myself, "What could possibly be louder than a marching band playing throughout their entire filming process?" 
with over 350 gigs in 2007, including multiple TV shows, commercials, movies, and other media events, as well as graduations, birthday parties, or whatever celebration you might be having. I think it'd be hilarious if they had to film with a marching band in the background. Plus, it'd be fun and music for your neighbors and a hell of a lot cheaper than getting speakers big enough to blast them away. He's offering the Laker Band, the USC marching band, to come up to my street the days they're filming. To practice. Yeah, do a little practice up there. Yeah, I mean, practice makes perfect. You know how that goes. That's right. I see see nothing wrong with a little bit of practice. So I'll tell you what, we have enough commotion going on across the street. uh, They're going to have to stop down. They're going to have to stop down. (laughs) But I think they're going to need new spots to film. But, um, <laughs> That's exactly right. So, sounds, sounds sounds like to me you you have a plan, and um, and it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. Absolutely. Well, we'll be happy to have you because it, it's going to be a party when I'm done. It's going to be a big party. Well, good to hear that. Yes. But, um, we would like to have a party out here in Fontana, but unfortunately, we got rained out today, and um, and qualifying got. Postponed, or I, I, I say canceled, not postponed, canceled. Yeah. And the grid is set off of last year's points. So um, so we got ourselves locked in here. Uh, I think we start 26th in Sunday's race. And we look forward to taking the Jim Beam Dodge out there and then seeing how we stack up against the competition. We had a pretty good run at Daytona last week. And I, I only expect good things this week as well. Now we should point out Robbie uh, is the owner and driver of number seven, and you'll you'll see him all season long with the Jim Beam Dodge out there, and and the, this is the Auto Club 500 this weekend at uh, California Speedway in Fontana. Which have they renamed it as now the Auto Club Speedway? I think it is. I, I believe it, it is the Auto Club Speedway at Fontana, which is uh, which is very good for the sport. I, I've obviously um, been a fan of the Auto Club for a long time. I've had to use them many times before, and. Um, you know, now they're involved in the racing program, which is good. Are they going to be handling the pit crew for you on Sunday, the auto club? Well, um, they're going you know, to get a tow truck in from, like, uh, East Hollywood to come down there and fix up when you're that I, I was kind of thinking the same thing. You know, we'd bring in about, um, what is there, 43 cars in the race. So if we hook up about 42 big tow trucks to all these haulers and yank them out of here in the morning, I mean, competition's not going to be that big of a deal. But you realize after four pit stops, you'll be out of uh, you know, the auto club won't let you use the card anymore this year. Well, what I was wanting to do is I was wanting them to hook up to everybody else's haulers and yank them out of the speedway. So, <laughs> so we're the only ones participating. That was kind of my plan. <laughs> now, now you, you got in some trouble already this year. I mean, where did, what is this season, a week old and, and you're already in trouble? What happened to you? Well, I think that's where we're, um, where, where maybe some people are confused, but we're, we're not in trouble. Um, we're, we're in a dispute with NASCAR about uh, illegal nose or non-illegal nose. And if you read the rule book, uh, the rule book says the 2008 Dodge Charger, not Dodge Avenger. And we had a Dodge Charger nose on our car when we showed up at Daytona. But supposedly it was an unapproved part. And um, it's something, how do you say it, I think putting this in, in clear layman's terms, it would be like somebody stealing your car. Committing a robbery, like a bank robbery, getting getting some good cash. I mean, we're talking about hundred thousand dollar fine here. So they stole a hundred grand with your car. They left your car, kept the money, and you're going to jail. That's not good. Not good. So unfortunately, um, we're getting convicted for a crime we didn't do. And the, basically, um, the manufacturer dropped off the illegal nose at our at our facility. We put it on our car. Uh, not knowing any better because we had just transferred from another manufacturer to Dodge, and um, and now we find ourselves in a bit of a situation with NASCAR. But I got to be honest with you, we, there was no intent. And at the end of the day, um, crimes are based on intent or or what you got away with or what you didn't get away with. But there was no intent in this crime that we're getting charged for. So um, time will tell. I think we got a we're looking at a an appeal date of uh, whatever that be. Um, March 5th, March 7th, somewhere between March 5th and March 7th that we'll appeal it. And obviously uh, our goal is to um, to have the penalty um, fit the crime. And right now um, we don't feel we committed a crime, so um, I wouldn't say uh, we should get any penalty at the same time. And and you didn't, uh, and people should know this who if, they, if they've not been paying attention, you didn't race with that nose. It was uh, discovered and corrected before the race ever began. It, it, was, it was removed off the car before... The race car ever even thought about hitting the racetrack, and so it's not um, the nose didn't have any effect on our performance in the Daytona 500. Um, it was clearly a clerical error by the manufacturer, and they released an illegal nose, not one, 
But how about if they release six of them to us? We put them on six Dodge Chargers, and then now we're cutting them back off again. Uh, but we've got about 15 of these car tomorrows built up, and we're just working hard to uh, to get our inventory up where we can uh, be competitive week in and week out. And I feel that we've got a, a good, strong program right now in place, and I expect uh, good results out of the number seven car all year. Fantastic. Now, uh, the big race is Sunday, and, uh, of course, uh, the, the, the Auto Club Speedway at Fontana, or the California Speedway, call it what you will. Uh, the, 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 the potential uh, audience there is up to 100,000 people, and I've seen that place full, and it rocks when it's, when it's packed. Well, I think this weekend's going to be a great weekend for racing, um, provided that the weather uh, participates with us on Sunday. But, you know, it's um, pretty much we're starting the field based off last year's points. So, obviously, Jimmy Johnson will have a, a bit of an advantage starting up front. But we feel that our cars are, are very competitive this year. And we look forward to, um, to getting started here on Sunday and, and letting everybody see how well prepared we are. And you're going to be out there with the uh, logo of our friends at Jim Beam again this season. Great partners of ours. Uh, they've been with us. They're, they're with us for their fourth season in, in NASCAR and Nextel Cup racing, or Sprint Cup racing, as it's changed this year. But um, they've been my partner for a while here, and I look forward to, like I said, uh, representing Jim Beam brand and, and doing a good job on and off the racetrack. That Fred knows a good friend of ours. You know, we've uh, been down in Kentucky at the Bourbon Festival. We spent some time there. He's the great grandson of Jim Beam. He's great, isn't he? He, he is a great he was guy. He was with us last week, and he is he's a lot of fun, and at the same time, uh, very knowledgeable and. And a, and a motorsport enthusiast at that. Uh, just really, really enjoys the competition. And I was um, I was proud to um, to represent him right uh, last week at Daytona. It's a lot of fun. NASCAR is bigger than ever. Uh, you're a, the, one of the biggest names in NASCAR. It's so great uh, t to talk to you and to have the association with Jim Beam and the folks at California Speedway. We just love it. All right, Tom. Well, it's good talking to you too, and I hope to get your um, your issue solved at your house. Absolutely, we'll and you're at, and you're at Costco in Fontana tonight from seven to nine, and then again on Sunday morning before the race. Sunday morning, uh, we obviously have our, our ritual autograph session out at the trailer. We've got a couple of Jim Beam appearances throughout the garage area, and then um, and then tighten tighten up our belts and hopefully have a good run. Robbie, always good to talk to you. Thank you so much for coming on with us. Thank you. Robbie Gordon will be driving number seven, the Jim Beam Dodge, coming up at California Speedway in the Auto Club 500. NASCAR is in full swing, baby. Second week of the big season. We'll be out there. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. So you don't believe that marriage could be happy? You don't believe that it could bring people happiness? I think there's people who uh, jump from an airplane and uh, they're happy, at least till they hit the ground. <laughs> Feels like you're flying. Uh, it's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show with wide open telephones. At 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Kelly on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Kelly. Hi. Can you hear me? No. Oh, well, I'm on my cell phone, so I couldn't tell if I was getting out. I just wanted to tell you something. You know, you're brilliant, but you bag on women all the time, and there's just as many jerk men out there as there are women. And if you want to hear about them, the Oprah Winfrey Show is on tomorrow at 3. What about, what, what, what? That, there's, every show on television is a show bagging on men. That's what's on. No, no, no. Every just, show. No, no, not just necessarily bagging on men, but like you talk about the women that just use men for money. Right. Okay. My head, I was married for 13 years. My husband quit working almost the day after we got married, and I paid his child support. I paid all the bills. And then in January... But you see, said, you did something I recommend that people not do, which is you married somebody who's got baggage. I know. I know. I just... I just which was a mistake, and now you found out why. Mm-hmm. Yep. But I just have a hard time having sympathy for that little 22-year-old girl that you were just talking to whose boyfriend is boning somebody else. I mean, come on. He's just testing. He's doing a test. Well, I mean, how stupid is she for dealing with it? Well, that's what I was trying to tell her. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I just thought I'd call and say that I'm a new listener. And um, at first, <laughs> at first, you made me mad. And then the more I started realizing, this guy's brilliant. It's 
just not all women. I just want you to get that. No, but I'm a guy, and it's from a guy point of view. I, I don't know what guys do. I just am a guy. I don't date guys. Well, so, thank God. Right. Right. But so I can't go on and intelligently comment on what guys do to women. I I don't know. Okay. And yeah. frankly, I don't care. Okay. Well, you have a good night. You have a good show. Thank you. Thank you. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. It's Bruce on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How you doing? I'm okay, Bruce. Tom, I got a question for you that I think some of the NASCAR people, well, at least people that are NASCAR fans, might find interesting. Uh, I know a few months ago you had talked one uh, afternoon about how the NASCAR drivers you didn't consider them athletes. And wondering now that after you witness some of these races firsthand and seen these drivers and what they do, have you changed well, your mind? I, I'm not saying they're not talented. They are very talented and big risk takers. And, um, you know, there's no doubt uh, that, that, that what they do is a beauty to behold and something to really appreciate. And I enjoy NASCAR. I enjoy going. I enjoy watching it on TV. Having said that, there are many things that people do that I enjoy watching that I would not categorize them as athletes. Hmm. Is Robbie still there? And what would he? No, think? Robbie is Robbie is gone. But had you asked this question when Robbie was on, I would say the same thing uh, with Robbie there. I uh, again, I'm saying these guys are talented and. Uh, you know, it's amazing what they do with marketing. It's amazing what they do with merchandising, and it's amazing what they do on the track. Uh, but it's, um, I wouldn't call it being an athlete any more than somebody who's a good poker player is an athlete. Uh, they, it's interesting to watch what they do, and they're smart and, uh, cunning and, uh, good bluffers, but are they athletes? And, and yet poker is on sports channels. I don't get it. Same thing with NASCAR. These guys are talented. But just fantastically talented, um, but but in reality they sit in one place for several hours under a tremendous stress and concentration, though. No doubt, and so does a chess player. <laughs> okay, so you're not gonna you're not gonna move. On I your, again, uh, I I don't I'm not trying to diss NASCAR drivers at all because I I love NASCAR. Oh, I understand but but there too. are people who love chess, you know, and uh, there are great chess players out there. But when you call them athletes, they're under stress. They have to sit there for hours and hours. Uh, it doesn't make them an athlete. I understand. Well, it's an interesting point of view. I have another question for you, if I could uh, ask you something about those people there that have a studio lot that won't allow you to say their name. Yeah, what about them? Well, I'm just curious that don't you think? Well, it may be paramount to them, but uh, it's not paramount to me. I understand. I mean, I'll tell you what's of paramount importance. I'm making sure that there's no filming across the street for me, no matter what film company is doing. I understand that. That is of paramount importance. That's a heck of a situation you're in, and I wish you good luck on that. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate the call. AJ is listening to our online stream. He's in San Jose, not San Jose, Costa Rica, San Jose, California. On the Tom Likas show, hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Hey, uh, I want to t- tell you about my story. You know, uh, I moved here uh, four years ago, and I started listening to your show. And your show inspired me to apply to college. And I got into Cal Poly Pomona and UCLA. I'm going to move there uh, four months from now, and I can't wait to listen to you on the radio. Every day. Yeah. I mean, when you get to L.A., our show's on from 3 to 8 every afternoon. Yeah, I can't, uh, your show inspired me to apply to college, and I think you should tell all the guys to, you should, you should tell all the guys the importance, importance of college education as part of your Likus 101 course. I think Likus 101 should be taught in colleges. I do. Yeah. I would be happy to... Uh, uh, work with uh, an anthropology department or a men's studies department, if one exists, uh, to craft a Lycus 101 course. All right, Tom, uh, blow me up. I'll blow you up, baby. one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. It's David on the Tom Lycus Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yes. How you doing? 
I'm doing okay. <laughs> That's cool. So are are you a big basketball fan or are you more of a Kings fan? Well, I, I'm both. I mean, I have a satellite dish that gets every single professional game, every auto race, every pay-per-view boxing event there is. Uh-huh. And what, what do you think about By the way, it's big Klitschko pay-per-view coming up tomorrow night. Sorry? Vitaly Klitschko. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Are, are you into the Shaq trade at all? Are you a Shaq fan? Well, I of course I've appreciated the great career that Shaq has had, absolutely. Do you think uh, he was worth keeping on the Lakers? He, a Jerry Buss, maybe but it was a season too early in unloading him, but clearly, based on the results, it was just one season. Okay, man, what do you think about the Miami deal? I think, uh, well, Miami... Uh, Needs to make deals. They are they are the worst team in the league this season, um, and this deal really hasn't uh, made them any worse than they are. Uh, as far as the Phoenix Suns, I don't know. Um, time will tell. But you've got a fast break team that runs and guns, and wow. then you've got the incredible Hulk <laughs> lumbering his way down the court in the middle of all that. Um, if I, I put it this way, and I am an NBA fan and I watch a lot of games, if I, you, you see Ben Wallace was available and was unhappy in Chicago, he's the man I would have gotten for the Phoenix Suns, Ben Wallace. You, you, you would pick Ben Wallace over Shaq? Like no doubt about it, because Ben Wallace gives the Suns what they need, which is defense, but he also gives them athleticism. Mm. And Shaq is older than Ben Wallace. There's no two ways about it. Was he four or five years older than Ben Wallace? Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. To me, it just seems like Ben Wallace recently has uh, his enthusiasm has been uh, decreasing. He's been playing for the Chicago Bulls, of course. And they stink. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they've got lots of great individual talent. But you watch. But Ben Wallace got traded to the Cavaliers? Right, right. Yeah, watch how much more interested he is when he's playing with LeBron James. Than playing with that cast of nobodies in Chicago. Do you think he's going to be able to keep up with James? Ben Wallace? Yeah. You can say a lot of things about Ben Wallace, but lack of athleticism, lack of athletic ability is not one of them. Lack yeah. of interest in what he's doing, lack of enthusiasm. Oh, sure, those things have been true in Chicago for Ben Wallace. But I would not say that lack of ability or lack of athleticism is a problem. Ben Wallace... Ben Wallace won the championship with the Pistons. The guy is a defensive maniac. He's he's a great defensive player. How right, right. how often did the Pistons ever give up a hundred points when he was there? He he is a machine. I mean, no, I agree with you there. I'm just saying, like uh, speed wise, you know, LeBron James' technique is pretty much chuck that ball down the court and go as fast as you can. I, I understand that, but put it this way. I think Ben Wallace would do a lot better job getting down the court than Shaquille O'Neal at this point. Okay, yeah, that's that's definitely, uh, yeah, that's an obvious. That's why I'm saying I think that uh, the, the Phoenix Suns, if they could have gotten Ben Wallace, that would that would have been a better uh, fit for them, I think. And, uh, and does that mean Shaquille O'Neal doesn't uh, have a place in the league at, at 36? No. Uh, there have been 30, you know, Will Chamberlain, there was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, there was Bill Russell, Bob Cousy, all these guys played late into their 30s or their early 40s. Um, yeah. It's just a fast-break team, a run-and-gun team, is not a place for Shaquille O'Neal. It's not. Who, who do you uh, think is going to win the championship? Boy, that <laughs> I think it's wide open. There have been so many trades, do we even know the... Uh, how the chemistry of these teams is going to be affected. Jason Kidd didn't do so well in his first game with the Mavericks. Wow. Um, uh, of course, uh, Kwame Brown uh, in Memphis. They're going to be in the playoffs, but you see what happened to uh, uh, Javaris Crittenden and uh, Kwame Brown. They've done nothing in Memphis at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, and But you look at the teams uh, that uh, that were involved in these deals. I mean, my God, uh, uh, you had the Spurs making that big deal with the Supersonics. Yes. You have, I mean, everybody in the West has made some kind of deal except the Hornets. And the Hornets just keep quietly winning. And the fact is, that, you know, they're in New Orleans, which is a small market. And they, they draw 10000 a night. <laughs> and so nobody's really paying attention to the Hornets at this point. 
Yeah, definitely not. But we, you know, the the real truth is, any fan knows the Hornets have the best record in the Western Conference, and they have for most of the season. Yeah, they just yeah. haven't been a factor in recent years so much, so people aren't even aware of their presence. If you ask the average casual fan who's a better team, the New Orleans Hornets or the Sacramento Kings, they give you the wrong answer. Yeah, I, I would go with the Hornets just because of Chris Paul by himself. All right. But you're an NBA fan. You're not a casual fan. You're a freak. Uh, yeah, I'm a fan of pretty much good basketball, only NBA. I don't like college because they're not the same athletes, but uh, that's my liking. Yeah, I'm an NBA fan. There's no doubt about it. And uh, I think, uh, you know, did you see, what, did you nobody have 41 points in the last game for the Spurs? I didn't get to see that Ginobili one. Ginobili was the number one scorer on the Spurs with like 40-plus points. Well, he does have to make up for uh, Parker. I mean, he Parker is coming back now, but, uh, he, you know. And the fact that he has to do it was in 44 points, Dean. 44 points. The fact that somebody has to do it doesn't mean Ginobili can or will. And he did. I mean, when somebody gets hurt, somebody doesn't always step up. You may recall the Lakers when Andrew Bynum got hurt. Who stepped up then? Uh, nobody, really, until uh, Powell came into the picture. Right. <laughs> so uh, Ginobili, at least, is capable of doing that. Yeah, uh, I think Ginobili is one of them, a very underrated player, actually. I mean, that's my uh, feeling on him. Well, I think that's because for years he was not a starter. Yeah. And uh, he's not American. And so he just doesn't get the attention. You know, we talk about big centers. How often do we talk about Yao Ming, really? He he hasn't been playing that well though this uh, this season. This season, but but if you look at him collectively of the uh, years he's been playing, I yeah. mean the guy's been one of the dominant centers in the NBA. But I think because he's from another country, he doesn't get the same attention as Tracy McGrady. Right, right. I think it's also like what you were saying uh, about NASCAR the. Marketability about uh, T T Mac compared to uh, Yao Ming. I, well, Yao Ming is going to sell sneakers in China, but yeah. not, how many is he going to sell in Houston? I don't know. But probably T Mac is also selling his shoes in China as well. I'm sure. Oh well, well because he plays with Yao Ming. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that may be uh, that may be fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody in China knew who Tracy McGrady was until he played with Yao Ming. Here's my last question for you. With coaches, do you think if uh, coaches were flipped around with the Suns and the Lakers, do you think both teams would stay as dominant? Well, I do think the Suns are built around the kind of team Mike D'Antoni wants to have. Uh -huh. and And the kind of game he likes to coach. It's just like uh, Phil Jackson. With that triangle offense, I mean, that the players that, that that play that system are the ones who last on the Lakers, are the ones who perform. Is, is Phil Jackson the one who went to championships, or was it uh, his great cast over all the years? I, I think it's both. I think uh, they each needed the other. Keep in mind, Michael Jordan played in the NBA before Phil Jackson was the coach, and yeah. he didn't win anything. Yeah, yeah. Shaquille O'Neal played in the NBA before he played for Phil Jackson, and he didn't win anything. That's true. Because I was speaking about this with my friend yesterday, and I was mentioning also the fact that you know the players will hit their peak at a certain point. So I was saying maybe they haven't peaked yet. Yeah, but you know you could say that. Yeah, but come on. Hey, uh, I have, I have to kind of. You know, you have to be right a little bit. You got and you gotta give Phil Jackson credit for engaging Kareem Abdul Jabbar to work with Andrew Bynum. Well yeah, that Bynum's now something special. Like I my personal opinion, I don't think Lakers are gonna go anywhere without Bynum. Yeah, but you gotta give Kareem credit. Uh and by the way, I see what what Kareem has taught Andrew Bynum when I see Bynum playing. Yeah. You see that sky hook once in a while. Oh, yeah. You see his physical play. Uh, you can see what he has learned from Kareem. Yeah. And it is much a tribute to, to Kareem and then to Phil Jackson for bringing in or allowing Kareem to, uh, to, to take on that task and to stay out of it. Got to give him credit. Yeah, definitely. Well, it's nice to, uh, 
it's nice to see kind of somebody who really enjoys the game. Like Andrew Benham seems like he really enjoys what he's doing. And can you imagine? Got- I hate. I know we got our Dallas friends out there, and we got our Seattle friends. Whatever. Can you imagine how the Lakers are going to be when Andrew Bynum comes back into this lineup? I I hope that the Lakers do well. I mean, I am a diehard Clippers fan, but I love the chemistry. I love the chemistry. It's fun basketball again. And the Clippers, Lakers. the Clippers have deconstructed. And they're they're once again the team that's trying to get the number one draft pick. Hey Tom, I don't even want to talk about it. I'm going to cry. <laughs> how do you make Sam Cassell so disenchanted? Uh, who knows? I mean. You know, they're giving, they're, don't give him whatever he wants. I, you know, I, is there a nicer guy and a guy who just comes in and does whatever you want him to do and was so much fun? Because I'm a Laker fan, but I enjoyed watching the Clippers the year that uh, that Sam was there leading them, uh, leading the charge with the Clippers. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely. And, and look what they've done. The guy just, you know, he's a complete professional and he's been completely... Uh, uh, disenchanted by the whole experience. It's sad. Yeah, definitely. And I can understand it. You know, you everybody wants to win. No doubt about that. It's the Tom Like His Show. Armand on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Yes. What's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing great. Good long time fan here. Hey, I want to add about the NASCAR you guys were talking about earlier. Yeah. All right, I wanted to let you know I've agreed with everything you said in the past, but this time I have to disagree, man. Why is that? Have you ever been in a car taking turns fast? No. Okay, let me tell you this. I raised my car. No, I, I, I do plan to, 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 to get myself a hot lap somewhere. I do. All right. Well, I'm sure you, you've heard of Willow Springs in Palmdale. No. Oh, well, it's a racetrack. It's like a circuit racetrack. I've taken my car out there a few times, and I'm telling you, in the first half hour of just racing there, the, all the for- G-forces going against your body, you start sweating. I guarantee you, <laughs> if you are not in top shape, you cannot race one yeah, of but the cars. same thing is true if you're a construction worker. Yeah. Construction but but worker. you wouldn't call it a sport. Doing no, construction not is not a sport. Because it's not a competition. A sport is a competition that uses well, physical activity. <laughs> So all sports are a competition. Can I say something about this real quick? Yeah. Uh, how about Tony Stewart? You know, I mean, Tony Stewart's easily twenty, thirty pounds overweight. He's a piggy, piggy. And uh, it's it's like a known fact that Tony Stewart's like he like eats slices of pizza and drinks Coca Cola before he gets in his car. So you can't really say that's an athlete. All right. Let me right? put it this way: if you if you're in a F one car around the track and you're in there for about thirty minutes, your body will just pass out. Because you have to be in top physical shape. To That's a, by the way, it's not F one. It's not F one. It's not F one. NASCAR is pretty much the same thing. Just it, no, it's not. Oh no, it's, it's not. not. Especially on a flat track like so Fontana. But yeah. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Tom, can you do me a favor? Uh, no. <laughs> I was gonna hit the fast forward on you. When you slow down there. <laughs> one eight, that's my new favorite now. one 800 You don't want to... By the way, unlike getting blown up, that's one sound effect you don't want to get on your call. You don't want that. Definitely don't want that. Nancy on the top Hi. like... Yes. Hi, John. I was going to say Nancy on the top like his show. Hello. Hello. Can you see? Hello. Oh. Hello? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Great. Yes? Okay, can you hear me okay right now? <laughs> Later in the call. Hello? <laughs> okay, so you can hear me. You said earlier about women that uh, every woman, you know, or whatever, says that she always wants to go out. Uh, it gets to a whine, in other words. Yes. Um, I just want to say not all women like that. I'm not like that. I didn't use the word all. You did. You're correct. I just wanted you to know that there are some women that are just like guys. I mean, my favorite thing is to stay in. 
grab you know grab a movie from the video whatever yeah but but darling you're not a 21 year old or a 24 year old you're not a nine or a 10 when i was younger i liked to go out but i didn't like to go out on skate i like to go dancing now but, now that you're not as young or attractive of course you're willing to be like right. a guy no no i've always been this way i've always liked to do that no you things. said I've when you were younger you like liked to go out no, 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 no. When I was younger, if I went dancing or anything, it was by myself. That way I could dance with more people. I didn't like to do it on dates, and I didn't like to take the little girls around either. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. nice. How does it feel to be the exception to the rule? I don't think I'm the exception. I think there are other women like this, too. I, I don't think all women think... I didn't say all. You did. Okay, I don't think... No, you didn't. But you do if I concede that there's much. an exception to the rule, the word all would not apply, correct? Correct. But you do say most, or, or I mean, you tend to categorize women. The younger and more attractive a woman is, the more likely it is she will want to be going out all the time. Not necessarily. Yes. By the way, if you want proof of this, uh, it's Friday night. Head into Blockbuster and see who's in line to rent a movie and it's those fat people who you know they they want the orville redenbacher popcorn and the butterfingers and their ass looks like a butterfinger not mine we're not talking about you but we're I... talking about the people tonight at block are you at blockbuster no I'm on right, so we're not talking about you are we no, you're... So, no, so, so stop saying, well, not me. I'm talking about the people at Blockbuster. The people who stay in. Right. But I'll be in tonight. In fact, I'm on my way to... By the way, day. darling, how tall are you? Five, five and a half. How much do you weigh? 145, I'm a size 10. That's large. That is large. That's not large. No wonder you like I, to stay I'm in. extremely shapely. Extremely shapely. Well, so is a basketball. No, 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 no. It's That's one continuous around. curve. You, you're, you're a large woman. No, I'm not a large woman. You're I short and round. No, not at all. You're short, round, and low and to the ground. Get to the next question that the other guy asked. What, what question kind of is that? Yeah, how big my rack is. How big is it? Thirty-eight double D. Thirty-eight double, not thirty-two or thirty-four no, double. Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight double D. Well, see. When you when you're chunky, no, I'm not. Then you get to the thirty eight, you. the thirty eight, the forty, the forty two. Yeah. Watch your mouth, we're on the air. Small. You can't say that word. Oh, thirty uh -huh. thirty four. The, the T word does not go on the radio. Okay, got a nice rack, got a nice rear. Thirty thirty thirty, 30 four double D. That's a nice rack. Thirty eight double D. There's some butterfingers or cinnabons in there. Uh, uh -uh. Oh yeah. Uh uh. Mm hmm. How big are you? Doesn't matter. I've got money, power, and fame. That's true. Okay, I've about used up my time. I think you've had enough. Yeah, I've had uh, enough. I know I have. She bought it. I'm money, power, and fame. Oh, yeah, okay. And I'm a professor of pool. And I'm an amateur guy. Okay. Okay. What are your credentials for this job? Well, I'm a professor of porn, and I'm an amateur gynecologist. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't think you had credentials. Love that. How much fun is this? How much fun are we having on this Friday? And what a weekend. The L.A. Kings playing the Chicago Blackhawks here in Los Angeles. You got the big NASCAR event at California Speedway this Sunday, and Gary and I will be out there. And God only knows what else will happen. Our email address, Tom at blowmeuptom.com.